Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm in a live improv group called Punjabi Tea House, and I want to show you how I set up my percussion and drum rack sets uh, for working on our live performances. Now, I'm really fond of layering multiple drum kits, so I'm going to start this here. You can see I've got four tracks here, and they're all just playing one clip each. I'm not going to change the clip at all. And I like to layer a bunch of pieces. We've got a simple thing going there. Another part to it. We have four separate kits running. Now, without changing the clip, I can just go ahead and change the mix a lot, which is a nice way of mixing up the beat. But in addition to controlling the mix of the four kits, I can also control the mix of the four instruments. So for example, I have all the kicks singled out here. And all the, well, I have something called a snare channel. It's mostly snares. And the hats. And miscellaneous other percussion. And so I can also play with the mix of the instruments independently from the mix of the kits. Not only that, I find it more useful to apply effects, reverb, and delay to these channels, not the individual kits. So. So now I'm going to show you how to create this. I'm going to start with a brand new live set here and go ahead and delete these audio tracks because we don't need them. Now I'm going to keep the standard reverb and delay tracks because it's nice to have those. And what we next need to do is to oops, uh, create four more return tracks. I'm just going to go ahead and use the shortcut for that. And we are going to label these kicks, snares, hats, and percussion. And just to keep everything nice and organized, I'm going to give them four uh, different colors so we can keep track of them. Um, here we go. There we go. Now, in addition, we're going to want these sends enabled so that we can send the individual uh, instrument buses, which is what these are, um, to the reverb and delay sends. So you have to enable those four. And now I'm just going to map everything to my MIDI controller so that I have direct control. So for example, on kicks, I'm going to just map these individual faders. And then for the sends, I want to have the reverb controls here. And so I'll just map them across. And the four delays on the four channels. There. So uh, now I can control the volumes of the individual buses and I can turn on sends for uh, reverb of the hats and percussion as well as delay effects. Okay, now I need to go ahead and add a drum kit. 
this up and pull out. This is the Acoustic 5 kit from the Bombastic set. You can play that. Bunch of notes there. Um, and now you need to open up the chain and uh, go ahead and show the returns, which is this little button down here. And down in this section here, we're going to add four return chains, which are like return tracks, but they're inside the drum kit. Unfortunately, there's no keyboard shortcuts, so you have to do them all yourself. And we're also going to rename them. So, um, kick, uh, snare, that's percussion. And just because, as I said, I like to keep things organized, we're going to go ahead and color these as well. Okay, now, now you have to assign each of the pads to a particular return, and the easiest way to do that is to uh, go ahead and open up up here. You can open up the drum rack, and also I'm going to hide these returns so we get to see all of the instruments, and for each instrument, you can play it and decide what it is. That's a kick, so that's going to go on A, this A is kick over here. And this is a snare, so we can do that. And I'm setting the send volume from infinitely off to zero dB to send it there. This is a hat. Um, often with a drum kit, you can just do it on the names. Open hat is there. This is another kick. This is a clap. I'm going to put that on percussion. Uh, I'm going to put the shaper on percussion. You, of course, can allocate the instruments any way you see fit. This is another snare. Um, I like to put the side sticks over here on with the snare, because I kind of think of that as being part of the same pattern group. Um, uh, that one too. Uh, how about this one? Mm, sure, I don't know. It's up to you, really. And these are cymbals. Um, that's a bell that goes on percussion. Tambourine goes on percussion. That's part of the hats. And there. So now we have them all assigned. And if you notice, as I play the hits, they play on the appropriate, that's a kick, that's a hat. If I close this up and show the returns again on our buses, you'll see um, that they don't play there yet, but we're going to make that happen next. So now the trick to doing that is this IO button down here, down here because I can send these chains, these return chains inside the drum rack into directly to our bus return tracks, one for one, hats to hats, percussion to percussion. And now when I play a kick, it plays on this kick channel, which then plays on this kick channel. And a snare and a hat and some percussion there. So, so now I have the one for one. But we're not quite done yet, um, because the next thing we need to do is that we're still playing the drum um, directly to the master. So I'm going to hide the sends here so we have some space and show the I.O. I'm going to send the audio out to the sends only. And now, key thing is that if I, if I pull out the kicks, even though I'm playing a kick, you don't hear it. Yay! Now we have achieved the Matrix drums. Um, so, uh, for example, I can take um, a little pattern, play it here. And I have the four parts all matrixed out. Okay. Now, in order to get the volume to control, one thing you'll notice is that if I'm playing this, that um, this volume has no effect. <laughs> so, I'll show you how to do that. What we do is we open up the macros in the kit, and we're going to map the volume on each of these to macro number one. So this goes here. This 
So I've mapped the chain volumes of these returns into this thing here. And if I take this off, so now this macro turns the whole drum on and off. And to make that work on my controller, I'm going to go ahead and map this to my controller. And um, oops, let's hide the returns here. I'm also going to map this to my controller, even though it has no effect. That way I can just see what's going on. So, so now I can control the volume of the whole kit. All right, so now we have our first kit done. And to do the second one, we just do the entire process all over again. And I'm just going to kind of run through it really, really quick. And taking um, another, uh, uh, this is from the uh, designer drums, I think. This is an FM operated drum kit. Quick kit. Really? That's kind of weird thing. And I'm just going to do exactly the same procedure all over again, which is. Um, oops, not that. Uh, let's see. I'm going to hide the drum chains. I'm going to open up in the kit. Um, open up the returns. Create four of them. them so you can see the correspondence. I'm going to go ahead and allocate all the drums. And to do that, I show the sim. Um, oops. Turn off IO and show the sims for all the drums. And again, it's pretty straightforward to decide what goes where, but you can do anything you want. Oops. Zero. Side stick. Snare. random progression. This is that. <laughs> For the crashes. Uh, Alright, so I now have the assignments. And, um, and once again I have to open the I.O. here and I have to assign these to the four return tracks. Snares, hats, percussion. And make sure the channel is sends only. There you go. And then lastly, do the same mapping procedure once again. Open up these macros and first map each of these volumes to this the first macro. And once I'm done with that, I can return it back up. And then MIDI map. Whoops, MIDI map my second slider to this as well as here. So I can see them both. And lastly, I'm just going to take the exact same clip and duplicate it here, because why not? I can play that one. Or this one. And if I show the returns, I still have the matrix. I can control the individual instruments. One last thing you can that's really nice about the setup is that you can apply processing to individual sets of instruments across the whole racks. So for example, I have a kick compressor here. Dump on there. Gives that some boost. Um, I have some snare EQ set up that I can stick on here. I'm sorry, snare compressor. 
for example, here I've got a, a beat repeat. That gives us a lot of options. And that's a lot of fun. If you have any questions, just look below. I'm happy to answer them and help uh, help you set this up for yourself if you need. Thanks.